It took water and time, tens of thousands of years to form, drop by drop and level by level, becoming the longest cave system in the world. Mammoth Cave is at once dark, terrifying, and mysterious. What's beyond that black opening? Massive rooms, seemingly endless passages, and beauty beyond belief. The cave calls out to be explored, discovered. There's a legend about how the cave was discovered. There were some determined hunters chasing a wounded bear, and they stumbled on the entrance. But the cave was discovered before that, thousands of years before that, by those who felt the pull of the unknown. The Native Americans were in this area of Kentucky for a, a good 10,000 plus years. But by 5,000 years ago, they began exploring not just a few hundred feet, but probably several miles into the cave. And we, ha we, we have evidence of that in, in some of the deep passages. And it seems to be just for the purpose of exploring. Um, I think like uh, humans anywhere, if you saw a hole in the ground the size of the entrance of Mammoth Cave, and it just went on and on, you would be enticed or tempted to continue. Maybe each time you went in there, a little bit farther each time. It's very cool to um, come to Mammoth Cave as an explorer and explore in the cave. I've been on some exploration trips where we're probably two miles from the nearest entrance and you'll be in a passageway or crawling along and you'll find uh, a reed torch where they've, you know, taken the, banged it on the ceiling to knock the charcoal off and, and their pieces are still lying on the ground. So you realize, you know, you've got all your your gear on and you know, um, you know your synthetic fabrics to keep you warm and everything. And there was a, a Native American way back there, you know, mining for some gypsum. So for me, that's you know, that's this amazing connection between the present and the past. That you know, like the caves really are this, you know, this um, it, like a time capsule. You know, the only difference between that person and me being back there is, you know, I'm I'm using a an LED light and you know these fancy clothes, and they were back there with, you know, straw shoes and a and a reed torch. In the spring of 1838, cave owner Franklin Gorin opened the cave to further exploration and tourism using slaves as guides and explorers. A young slave named Stephen Bishop made a name for himself and Mammoth Cave by opening new parts of the cave through his explorations. As far as history goes, he didn't exist until he came to Mammoth Cave in 1838. Prior to that, he was just another slave, another enslaved person. But then when he came to Mammoth Cave with Franklin Gorin, who owned the cave, and began to explore Mammoth Cave, as a teenager, by the way, like 17, 18 years old, all of a sudden it seems that he found a niche and he loved being underground. He loved finding areas of the cave that no one had ever seen before. And he seems to have fallen in love with just that environment underground. And I think he also enjoyed the position he had as a cave guide. And 
and the attention that people gave him as he led them through the cave passageways. You know, it was a unique situation for a group of white people, of Caucasians, to walk underground following a black man, a slave at that, and listening to his directions and doing what he said to do, stepping here, stepping there, handing you a lantern and saying, hold this. He had, he had an atypical job for a slave and he had, a, he had to have authority about him. Not only that, he was an intelligent man. He learned to read and write. He was exposed to so many worldly uh, matters that honestly my ancestors at the same time period probably had no clue of because Stephen was enjoying days spent with people from Europe, scientists from all over the country who came to, to study Mammoth Cave. And yet at the same time, he had to exit the cave and go back to being that enslaved person who knew his place in society. A common theme for those who are drawn to the cave is a need to find those unexplored places, to be the first to set foot on virgin territory. In the, in the 21st century, that there are still places that you can go that no human has ever been before is, is a pretty rare thing. Um, the uh, uh, space shuttle you know, is flying over the earth and, and mapping out mountains and um, you know, all, all the features on the earth. There, there are new, new mountains to find. Every single one is, has been mapped out by now. And it's easy to think that the world is just completely explored, you know, that everything's used up, but there's places in, in caves um, and, not, and, and, and other places on the surface that are harder to get to, but there's, there's places in caves uh, where literally you can go that no human has ever been before. And many of those places are in remote uh, areas of jungles or you know, places that are very difficult to get to. And um, Mammoth Cave, we can have that experience, but it's, uh, it, it's here in rural Kentucky, you can drive right up to the entrance. And it just the cave is so extensive that there are passages, um, many passages that are, that are still not explored. And for many people, the, the experience of traveling somewhere where you are the first person ever to, to go there to, to put footprints on the ground is, is really, it, it, it's almost like a drug to some people, that it's, um, uh, that it, that's an, it's an experience that is just so uh, overwhelming to some people that, that it really kind of draws you to go to a lot of effort to, you know, to try to put yourself in that situation. When you're in a cave that's, that no one's been in before, you, you definitely get that man on the moon feeling. You can walk into a room where you're, you, you leave the first footprints in that room you know, 100 years, 200 years from now, when people come into that room again, yours will still be the footprints there. So it's a, a very rare privilege to go somewhere where you can actually be the first human to see something, where you don't have, you know, a huge government funding you. So, you know, you can just buy a helmet, buy the, the knee pads, and then go explore a cave. So how many places on the earth can you say that, well, no one's ever seen that mountain, or no one's ever been to that ocean? Well, you can still say that about caves because you can't see caves, so you don't even know if they're there. So the, the, the challenge is to find a cave, and if you find something, it's pretty guaranteed, you know, if it, if it was hard to find, that no one's ever been there before. And so, you know, you get to be the first one to put footprints in, in Virgin Passage. And that, just for, from the purely exploration point of view, that's pretty darn exciting. It's like going to the moon, almost. I think that among people that study caves, uh, the area between the Barren and Green Rivers, the karst landscape is, is, a, is a jewel that uh, has global significance. And, and I would say it's, it's important, it, there's a message that people that are learning about the cave or, or see films about the cave uh, will take away. It's that, that, it, that it is a treasure and it's also a, a fragile treasure. It's good to 
develop an appreciation just for the fact that even though you can't see it, there, there's a very uh, wonderful living world down there. And the, the first way to, um, the, the first part of protecting it is, is understanding and appreciating it.